God bless you and thank you for joining me again as we study God's Word together. Today we'll be looking at why do we fall into temptation. As, as you know, as soldiers of Christ, we need to be ready, we need to be prepared to, to defeat the tactics, you know, the schemes of the enemy who wants to destroy us. Okay. One of the first things I would like to discuss about why we fall into temptation is over confidence of our confidence in fact a great man um, a famous prime minister uh, of the united kingdom Winston churchill said to the british people in the early days of world war ii he said this i quote i must drop one word of caution for next to cowardice and treachery overconfidence leading to neglect and slothfulness is the worst of wartime crimes and we're going to look at a biblical example of our confidence and this is a person we all know about his name is King David who was overconfident he was supposed to be at the battlefield fighting the lost battle but he decided to stay at home let's look at our story so if you got your Bible done with me to 2nd Samuel chapter 11 from verse 1 to 4 and I read from New, L, New Living Translation. It said, In the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonites' army and laid siege to the city of Rabbah. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Late one afternoon, after his midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking bath he sent someone to find out who she was and he was told she is Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam the wife of Uriah the Etite that she sent alarm bells to David but instead David sent messengers to get to her and when she came to the palace he slept with her she had just completed the purification rites from having a menstrual period then she returned home See, David was overconfident. Instead of being at the battlefront to lead an army of God into battle, he stayed at home. And so, a lot of his overconfidence, you know, the, the Satan already had a strategy for him. He staged his life for him. He set up a stage for his fall. David got up, got up from bed, went to the rooftop of his palace, and at that same time, Satan also set a stage, you know, for um, Bathsheba. Who was who happened to be having her bath at that same time? So David saw Bathsheba having her bath because she, David was on the top of a roof palace, you know, and and he could see Bathsheba, and sadly he fell into sin. He asked for her, slept with her, and committed adultery. With her. Now remember that David didn't wake up that day with a plan or desire to commit adultery but because of his overconfidence he wasn't where he ought to be he was at the wrong place at the wrong time satan set the stage for his fall and we then need to ask this question and this is the principle where are you in god's plan for your life are you in the right place right now are you at the right job? Are you with the right people? Are you with the right friends? Are you in the in a right relationship? Are you in the right church? If you're in the wrong place, you may enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, but while in the end, in the end, you reap the wages. So we need to be careful of being overconfident. Okay. Now, let's take an example from the Bible. And this time um, in the New Testament, his name is Peter. So let's get a testimony of Peter because Peter himself was, was a man also who was overconfident. He boasted, you know, Jesus was going on, going on his way to Jerusalem. So um, Peter, you know, Peter, uh, the Lord was explaining what was going to happen to Jeris happen in Jerusalem to him. But Peter started talking and boasting and said, you know what, Lord? Others may deny you, but I will never deny you. You see, he said he will never stumble. 
the others might, but I won't. But we know in the end that he did stumble. You know, he denied the Lord. We also we need to be careful, you know, and not be overconfident in ourselves, not depend in our own strength, because everyone and anyone is capable of falling. We saw that in, in, in the testament of King David, even though he was a sweet psalmist of Israel, the man who killed Goliath, but the sin of overconfidence led him into sin of adultery okay so we must never say i will never do this or that that is nothing less than self-confidence the bible tells us in jeremiah 17 you know um that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked the heart is deceitful and deceitful. so we need to, to we need to be aware of that and not to be deceived. The Bible warns us to be on guard lest we fall into sin. 1 Corinthians 10 12 says, Let him who think he stands take heed lest he fall. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. You know, the sin of overconfidence is carelessness, slothfulness, neglect of spiritual things okay so we need to be careful so the first thing that we learn of why we fall into temptation is overcoming the second thing is prayerlessness you know jesus said again before peter fell he told them pray lest you fall into temptation in luke 22 uh, verse 46 you know jesus said to peter why are you sleeping he asked them get up and pray so that you're not given to temptation. You see, not to pray is sin. And when we don't pray, we are spiritually weakened because the power for the Christian life is obtained through prayer. We need to be plugged up. We need to connect to God through prayer. And then we receive prayer. We are strained because if not our flesh, our corrupt desires, our natural inclinations, it rises up, you know, it's strengthened so that when the battle comes, when we are tempted, because our spiritual, a spiritual man is weak, our natural man is strengthened. Our natural man takes control and detects, you know, the order of the battle we lose because the natural man you know, manifests itself, manifests its weaknesses. So that's why we need to pray. Again, like I said, not to pray is sin. It's what is called sin of omission. In First Samuel chapter 12, 23, there's a great prophet Samuel said, when you don't pray, you become spiritually weak. Okay? He says, God forbid that I should, should stop praying for you. God forbid that you sin by stop praying for you. He said, as for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you. So when we do not pray, we are sinning against the Lord. Okay. So the Bible wants us, the end of all things is near. Things are getting worse. Iniquity is abounding. Sin is, you know, running rampant in our world today. So, we need to be on guard because the end of all things are turned. First Peter 4 7. If you're, if you're talking about First Peter 4 7, Peter said this. He said, But the end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious in your prayers. Be serious and watchful. If you're not serious in your prayers, you will fall. You know, the New Living Translation says, The end of all the world is coming soon. As we see all things that are happening around us today, it's going to be much harder to be a Christian or to live the Christian life. So Peter said, the end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. So as a believer, you need to cultivate a disciplined prayer life. Well, you may say, well, you know, 
things are hard, things are difficult in life, you're just so busy, I can't, I just struggle. The point is you cannot afford not to pray because not to pray is to lose in a battle against temptation. You need to make time. You know, what we love, what we value, we make time for. We make time to watch our favorite programs, to listen to news, to documentaries, to um, um, sitcoms on TV, you know, um, to watch football or whatever you enjoy. We make time to call our friends, to solve the net, social media, you know. So what we value, what we love, we give time to. So it's very important that we cultivate a habit of prayer, cultivate a disciplined life. You need to plan your life. We need to plan our lives. This is the time that is suitable for me. For yours, it could be morning, for some afternoon, some night. So you need to find your time suitable for you to connect with God. Because we know, you know, every day we make sure our phones are charged. We don't forget to charge our phones. Why? Because we know we lose power and we become our phones become ineffective. So we make sure we charge our phones, you know, and you can charge it anytime. As long as it's charged, it, 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 um, you know, you charge in the morning or afternoon, whatever is suitable, it doesn't matter. So the same thing applies in the spiritual sense of prayer. Just make sure you are charged, you are connected to your Father. So, um, what, what causes to fall into temptation? Overconfidence. The second one is prayerlessness. The third one is spiritual distancing. Okay, spiritual distance. What's that? We find that in Luke 22, we'll, Verse 54, if you open your Bible, you see, you see what's happening here. The Bible says when Jesus was arrested, they led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. Peter was following Jesus at a distance. He said, when we isolate ourselves from the Lord and fellowship with other believers, we make ourselves vulnerable to the devil's temptation. When we begin to isolate ourselves, we begin to be distancing ourselves. You know, from the things of God, from fellowship with other people, you know, from you know, from communion with the Lord. I call that spiritual distances. You see, we become vulnerable to the devil's temptation. We become like a sheep, isolated from other flock of sheep. Okay? And the sheep becomes vulnerable to the devil. It becomes an easy prey to the devil. See, when we isolate ourselves, when we begin to distance ourselves from the things of God, you don't press you used to. You don't um, listen to the word of God as you used to. You don't fellowship as you used to. Guess what? You become vulnerable. You become an easy prey. And you will fall into temptation. So, have you been distancing yourself from the Lord? Now is the time to come back. You know, the Bible says, God says, draw near to God. And it will draw near to you. You see, we need to draw near to God. Why? Because when we draw near to God, Satan is afraid. He dare not come near. It's like, you know, when you have a strong man, you know, with you, you know, holding your hand, you know, or, you know, no one dare come near you. The same thing applies. You see, when you distance yourself from God, hmm, the enemy is happy. Yes. Even they encourage you to distance, you know, distance yourself from the Lord because the enemy will put all things that are not important in your life to distance you, you know, that to devour you. But when you draw near to God, the Bible says, go, we draw near to you so that's it so um the last one we're going to talk about is you know why we fall into temptation is hanging hanging around the wrong people hanging around the wrong kind of people and places you know can put us into trouble can cause us to fall into temptation so hanging around people you know just because we want them to accept us or to or to look cool we cause us to fall into temptation you see peter wanted to accept the crowd wanted to be sorry Peter wanted to be accepted by the crowd you know he sat within the crowd in Mark 14 66 to 68 we read meanwhile Peter was in a courtyard below one of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warming himself at the fire she looked at him closely and said you were one of those with Jesus of Nazareth Peter denied it. I don't know what you are talking about. He said he went he went out into the entryway. Just then the roaster crowed. You know, Peter wanting to be accepted by the crowd. He was among the wrong kind of people. You know, denied the Lord. Uh, so another example we have in the Old Testament is um, the unfortunate incident of Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, that great man of God. The man who saw the visions of God. 
Genesis, you find that story in Genesis 34, one, well, verse 1 to 2. Now, Dinah did not mean this thing to happen to her, this terrible thing, which we're going to read in Scripture. But because she hung around the wrong people. Now, let's read. One day, Dinah, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local prince of that area, Shechem, son of Amor, the Evi saw Dinah, he seized her and raped her. You see, Dinah did not go there to be raped, but because she was among the wrong kind of people. You see, when we find ourselves among the wrong kind of people, there will be a problem around. It will be easy for you to fall into temptation. Okay? So that's why it's important to find godly friends that will build us up in our faith and build up our desire and challenge us to follow God. You see, and not those who will drag us down and decrease our desire for spiritual things. You know, God said, cut such people off your life. Okay? Okay, we are not saying, you know, go and be a mock and isolate yourself. You see, there's a difference between those who we are around and those who we spend our time with. So, what kind of influence do your friends have on you? That's a question you must ask yourself. What kind of influence does your friends have on you? Or what influence do you have on your friends? The Bible said, do you want to be happy in life? You know, do you want to be blessed? Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 says, All the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sin and so join with the mockers, but delight in the love of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. You know, that word blessed means happy. If you want to truly be happy in life, choose your friends wisely. You know, a um, last verse, a last scripture for today, you know, James 1 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure temptation. Okay? Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you want to receive the crown of life? I want to receive the crown of life. I'm sure you do. If you're a believer in Christ, then beware of overconfidence. Beware of prayerlessness. Okay? Be careful of those you hang around with. If you want to be happy, happy is the man who endures. You'll be happy, you'll be blessed, you have fulfillment. And God will bless you for your faithfulness. Okay? So in closing, let's repeat what we've done today. Why do we fall into temptation? Because of our confidence. So take it, be careful, you know, and make sure you're standing firm in the Lord. Secondly, beware of prayerlessness. Make time for God. Create a time for God. Thirdly, spiritual distances. Don't distance yourself from God or God's people. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. And lastly, hang around the right people. So God bless you for listening. And um, and join me again next week. If you if you missed any of, of our um, messages, you can always check it online at Noah Sachs Sanctuary Church. That's our YouTube channel or so far Facebook um, Facebook page. So God bless you for watching and if it's blessed you please do share this so others can be blessed, blessed as well. So God bless you and Father in the name of Jesus we thank you once again for allowing us to fellowship through this medium. I pray for those who are struggling at this moment that you will re they will receive strength in the name of Jesus. Yes Father in the name of Jesus, I plead your blood and break every hold, every grief, every wrong attitude, or habit that is holding your people in body. Right now, in Jesus' name, I say let it be broken in Jesus' name. Father, lose your grace and mercy upon your people. Let them know that you love them and you care for them in Jesus' name. Yes, praise the Lord. I just want to say this. God loves you. And God is a, a God of second chances. Psalm 86, 5 says, God is good and ready to forgive. So, do not be discouraged. Maybe you're falling. You know, God is a God of second chances. So renew your coming with God. And God will bless you. Take care and have a blessed evening. Amen. And see you next week.